out. Hey guys, Spray and Pray here and welcome back to another Top 5 Victoria 2. We are looking at the top 5 most amazing Victoria 2 mods in the entire game. This is like probably going to be my penultimate mod video for Victoria 2 and it's going to give you a pretty good lowdown on the best 5 mods that are out there for Victoria 2. There are not very many Victoria 2 mods, so this is pretty much a comprehensive guide to all the mods that are worth downloading, at least in my opinion. If you have other opinions, if you want me to do a different top 5 next time, or there's a mod that you think should have made the list, please say so in the comments below. Now without any further ado, we're going to get started with the number 5 greatest mod ever in Victoria 2. Let's go ahead and start. Now you might not be able to tell because this looks very very much like 1836 normal normal Victoria 2 Harder Darkness. However, it has a very big twist and we'll start a game really fast and I'll just, you know, go through so that we can sh we'll go ahead and start in this Tuscany, why not? All right, so let's go ahead and fast forward a little bit here because this is important. Oh, what's this? A mysterious plague in Spain? Hmm, what could that be? Well, if you didn't guess it by now, this is the Apocalypse mod. You can check it out, there's links in the description for all the mods. It actually makes zombies in Victoria too. It's very, very cool. They take the form of rebels, so rebels will take over countries kind of like zombies. They'll rise up, you have to put them down, you know, sort of like that, and then they'll eventually take over entire countries where you'll be like the only person left. It's very scary, fun mod that you can kind of, you know, mess around with a little bit. I'll be in the chapel. <laughs> this mod, of course, is very similar to Vanilla Victoria 2, Heart of Darkness, so it doesn't really offer too much of in the form of entertainment for too long. It's kind of fun, but eventually you do get overrun by zombie rebels, and that's pretty much the end of the game. There's no colonization or anything, really, because you don't really normally last that long, and there's kind of no incentive to play the game past, you know, just a couple hundred years. And I mean, if you don't even get occupied by zombies by then. So that's why it's number five. Let's move on to number four. Coming in at number four on the list of Victoria 2 greatest mods ever is the Victoria 2 Modern Age mod. Now I've done a couple let's plays, or one let's play as the United States in this mod and it went pretty well. Um, there was some problems with it but we'll get into that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the map. Now what you'll see before you is a very very accurate map uh, as pretty much exactly today. Or well 1992. But you know 1992 and today are very similar. There's probably very little to no map variation. Anyways, so the United States is a pretty good power. They've recently gone and um, they, they said that they op updated the population, but I'm pretty sure they didn't because uh, honestly, all these populations are the same as they were, you know, in uh, in Victoria. Now, so it creates a bunch of issues, honestly, for the United States of America, just because like the People's Republic of China is so strong. And uh, I think that the version I played was maybe a little bit different than this. But anyways, yeah, so uh, a lot of things are different in this mod. Of course, borders, definitely one of them. There's a bunch of new technologies and stuff. We'll load in as the United States just to get a look. And pretty much every country in the world has westernized, so you can't really take over. Oh, and then they also did the newspaper thing. Anyways, so yeah, uh, let's take a look at the new technologies. There's every technology is different now. You can, there's all kinds of new things, new pictures for all of them, there's new military units that you can see here, all these uh, militia, mechanized, jets, stuff like that. They all behave exactly the same as the old units. There's a bunch of other transports that you can try too, however, uh, there's still like ironclads and stuff though, which is really weird. Especially because like aircraft carrier, shouldn't that be like way more <laughs> uh, tank? But no, they, it's fine. It's just, you know, this is why it's number four on the list. It also has a couple ear issues with uh, mods. I mean, sorry, not mods, but rebels. There's a lot of rebels that just don't make sense at all. Like, for instance, the United States of America, when we were playing, we flipped to socialist almost immediately, as did the rest of the world, and then every few years we would have a bunch of revolts for like no reason. It was really strange and it actually ended up I had to stop playing the mod just because there was no way, there's just too many revolts all the damn time. It was so annoying. And I mean that was kind of the end of it. You can get around that by simply just, you know, going ahead and changing it saying there's no rebels ever, which works and works well. So I would definitely go ahead and try that and go ahead and play this mod. It's really fun. So and that's why it's number four on the list. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to number three. 
All right, coming in at number three is the Kaiserreich mod. Now, this mod is, like, these top three mods, guys, I had a really hard time rating. So please do not get mad if you think that one should have been two or three or one, because they are all great mods. The first two, you know, they're kind of, eh. But these three are great mods, and I definitely recommend if you're going to pick one of these five to play, it's got to be one of these top three guys, because it's these are just so good. Now, Kaiserek is a extensive, like, alternate history mod. We'll go in as single player real fast. Now, the whole, like, idea of it is that the German Empire, they won World War One, I, I believe, is the whole idea of it. You know, of course, we have to pick the 1921 start, please. That's what it's asking us to do. Yeah, so we're in 1921, we're the German Empire. We have all these things over here. We've won the war against the Allies, and things are looking good for us. Look at that. We are 16 million population in Europe. That is ridiculous amount of population. The Republic of China is partially westernized, so uh, that's kind of scary. But the Soviet Union, very strong. They got the Russian whites. So yeah, we've actually like disbanded. That's really cool. The United Kingdom is still a threat. However, you know, we have more population than them and better industries soon enough. France is pretty much going to be defeated very shortly. French Africa, you know, nothing. We have a lot, a lot, a lot of Africa. Brazil, we took over the uh, colonies from the French, I believe. The United States is still there. But, um, you know, we're, we're, we're very scary compared to them. Denmark, you know, they, they, we own all of our stuff. All this weird, this, oh, that's sweet. I was like, why did it say Sweden? <laughs> no, that's Sweden. Um, Finland is free. The Germans are, and we have, um, the sphere of the, the Deutschland, Deutschland, what the hell is that? I can't even read it. Dutch something. Um, and so, yeah, but these are all of our, like, little satellites. I believe that's Ukraine, uh, Romania, and, like, Livonia, or Lithuania, maybe? I don't know. But, um... I, I'm terrible. And then Bulgaria down here has spheres on all this shit. Or well, Hungary has spheres on that shit. Anyways, yeah, so it's a very, very interesting mod. I definitely recommend playing it. It has a lot of different things. We're gonna run in here as the Germans, and you can't tell because I had to turn off the music because I was afraid of getting a copyright strike, but this mod has the greatest soundtrack ever. That is just, like, it's so nice. All the technologies are different. There's a bunch of new pictures and stuff like that. It's a very, very extensive mod, alternate history, but very cool. Now we can see this is Ukraine. This is, um, can't pronounce that. And then this is uh, Austin. I don't know. Whatever. <laughs> don't be mad. Anyways. But yeah, guys, this is just a ridiculous, it's a fat, everybody's fascist, I'm pretty sure, except for, well, the France is fascist. Um, they're a great power, so I think that they're supposed to be in our sphere, but since they're a great power, they break out. Anyways, this is just an insanely cool mod. I definitely recommend it, like I said earlier. This British India, damn. Uh, they're at war right now with Afghanistan, though. We have German Vietnam, all this all this stuff that's like Germany, but like shouldn't be at all. Uh, Empire of Japan is really strong now and I mean things are just there's so many you don't even have to play as the German Empire to get a good like awesome gameplay you could play as the Soviet Union reclaim your Russian uh, whites counterpart over here you could play as the Empire of Japan and defeat the United States in these uh, those World War two when it comes along this is just it's such a good mod it's so cool and I recommend it to anyone who wants to play it so that's why this is now the I, I I have very little experience, so there might be a bunch of rebel issues, and that's why I put this at three because it looks like a great mod. I'm not actually sure if it's a great mod because I haven't really played it that much, but you know, based on what I've seen so far, it's a I there's no reason for it to be terrible. So I definitely recommend you play it. Anyways, that's why it's number three. Let's move on to number two. Coming in at number two for the greatest Victoria 2 mods ever is the Pop Demand mod. Now this mod is not as extensive as the last one, but it is it adds a lot to the game. It does a full economic rework, as well as it adds a bunch of new decisions and stuff like that to the game, as well as at the end of the game there is a whole new entire war mechanic. It's really cool. They change up the whole map situation here to look a little bit more realistic and how it was. We can load in here as, let's go as the United Kingdom. I've never actually clicked the United Kingdom to play them. 
So I'm actually interested to see what it looks like. Oh God, we're so OP. <laughs> um, anyways, so basically what happens is the pop demand mod just reworks the entire economy, changes a couple of the nations around. It adds all of these guys down here in Africa, as well as some of these nations down here in South Africa. Changes up a little bit of the things over here in Asia, but all in all, things are pretty the same. It unites the Qing Empire, although they are still uncivilized. The shogunates, it's really weird what they did with China and Japan, because like China is now one nation and Mongolia, and they're uncivilized still. But Japan is not one nation anymore, but they're broken up. It's very weird, very, very weird how they did that. Anyways, it's a really cool mod that allows you to just kind of, you know, do your own thing. There's no limits on what you can not can and cannot do. Um, it's just like regular Victoria 2, except for, like I said, they've added things to it. So if you like the vanilla experience, but you want to know something more, then this is definitely the mod for you. The, so there's several drawbacks to it, though. Um, I've noticed when I played my German campaign, it did crash quite frequently when I got to, you know, the year 1900. It was crashing pretty much every year, which was really annoying. However, when I played the Italy campaign, it didn't crash as nearly as much. So I think it's kind of random and like your save game can become destabilized. So uh, I would just watch out for that. And the second thing that's kind of bad about it is that some people complain that the, the economy tweaks that they do make the game too easy. Now, I mean... Uh, for me, it's really just like the economy is not that much of a big deal to me because there's like why it doesn't really matter. Uh, I'd feel I feel like the diplomatic and military things are more important to the game's like core functioning things. I'd rather have a fun time doing that than having to worry about micromanaging an economy that kind of makes no sense, honestly. In Victoria 2, this kind of there's no rhyme or reason to what happens to your factories, and it's just really sort of annoying. However. That's sometimes considered a con to some people. However, if you like a more balanced, easier economy, then this is definitely the mod for you. And that's why it's in here at number two. Let's check out what is the number one most awesome mod. And I bet you can probably guess because you haven't seen it yet. Here we go. And coming in at number one as the most awesome Victoria 2 mod ever is Victoria 2 Ultimate Edition. So this Ultimate mod is pretty much basically an ultimate mod. It does everything. We're going to go and load in a single player. There are so many different start zones that you can see my game is India is like all the way the heck down here. So like why there's so many different starting times that you can pick. The earliest of which is 1604. That is a ridiculously early start considering that the whole game of Victoria 2 is only 100 years. It's giving you 200 extra years just to start and the game goes forever. There's no limit anymore. You you don't stop at 18 or 1928 or whatever it is you don't stop there you can keep on going till eternity pretty much in this mod it's very cool now there are several pretty glaring drawbacks as far as this mod is concerned the rebel situation in Europe is kind of appalling if we go ahead and take a look at maybe one of my Hyderabad games we can uh, zoom in and check out like for some reason they like the entirety of Europe is like controlled by rebels I don't know why um, it's very weird um, but yeah I, that's like pretty much one of the only issues that I notice is that sometimes the countries don't really know how to build units however I'm sure as we get closer to the normal like game period for the game that they should be more or less you know falling in line for where they should have all their units and stuff like that so let's take a look at some of these awesome you know starting times we're gonna go up a hundred years now the Austrians are huge Poland Lithuania is like ridiculous almost commonwealth prussia is starting to form sweden's taking over pomerania very weird british europe that's kind of weird um the united kingdom is over here that's really kind of weird how the <laughs> the name is there but that's kind of cool now moving up to the american revolution you can see that the 13 colonies are, uh, you know, pretty much more or less where they're supposed to be. They're a little bit actually more than what they probably should be. But the uh, the Iroquois are still there. The Spanish, oh my god, Spanish South America. Those guys are so freaking OP. The Europe, largely unchanged. Prussia is getting a little bit more situated. Austria is getting a little bit more situated. Russia is, like, massive always. Sweden, being Sweden. Anyways, next one is the rise of Napoleon. As you can see, French Europe. I, I don't know why it's doing French Europe. Like, it's like, ooh, it's a colony. No, but it's not. I think that just has to do with, like, right at the beginning. The United States of America has been spit out. 
Now we can move up to the grand campaign, which looks exactly the same. Just this is normal, normal start for uh, them. But you have all these extra units and all this other cool stuff that you can do. Now up to World War II. Now you can see the Third Reich is here. They're actually at war right now with the Allies, not the Soviet Union yet, thank God. Because that, that I tried to play as the Third Reich just you know to test out the mod a little bit, and oh my God, it's so hard to play them because the French the French have their full army, and it's like what the hell am I? I can't fight this. It's crazy. But yeah, there's a pretty it's a very accurate representation of the time. The Republic of China has you know sort of kind of united sort of uh, these things Japan is like crazy powerful they have a ridiculous population they're just doing great the Dutch are just booming down here in their colonization efforts Australia has taken over these uh, colonies up here too very interesting moving up you can go to the Cold War even and there's a huge Soviet Union with all these like little substates that are next to them that could probably be easily sphered Germany is split into East and West Germany or well j just regular Germany I guess Sweden Finland everybody is still pretty normal the United States is free over here Newfoundland is free we're getting very close to like the modern you know everything obviously Africa is a, an exception and China pretty much but yep so that's pretty cool. Thailand is formed. Moving up, you can actually even go to the new millennium, which is basically modern day. And this is why this mod is so much cooler than modern day mod, because you can actually do modern day mod in ultimate mod. But it doesn't have all those rebel issues that I talked about in the modern day, or at least not that I know of. Of course, it has probably its own rebel issues, like we saw you know, with the, the weird rebels all in Europe here. But, you know, it's a very accurate and, you know... Uh, representation of everything. China is freaking powerful as hell. India is purple. Indonesia is actually really like low population for what it should be. I'm pretty sure they haven't messed with any of the population, so don't expect that to be correct. Philippines is free. Japan is free. And you can even go into the future 23 years and look at that. Scotland is completely like, uh, England is all torn apart. Brittany is free. Catalonia is free. This is like a weird, I, I highly doubt this is what the world is going to look like. I bet you in 2023, which is only like eight years away, right, right that it's the world is probably going to look very similar. I doubt that Venice is going to be free. These these things, these are all going to, it's going to look the exact same as it does now. Now, oh, but I think this is like a doomsday thing because the United States of America has split between the, you know, more industrialized north and the less industrialized south and middle of the United States. Very kind of weird. Quebec is free. Canada is still, like, probably going to eat Quebec if I was Canada. Brazil, South America, unchanged. Africa, kind of weird looking. India, People's Republic of China, Thailand, everything is still pretty much the same over here. Indonesia, they still got the wrong amount of population, so nothing special there. But this mod is just great. It's the ultimate mod. That's why it's the ultimate mod in my top five. So if you don't agree with any of the things that I've picked out, please go ahead and go down into the comments section. Tell me which mod you think should have been on this list, and tell me what you want to do for the next top five. After this section here is going to be a short, like, tutorial on how to install all these mods. I will also publish that video by itself, so if you don't want to watch this again but you need to remember how to install the mods, you can watch that. Anyways, thanks so much for watching guys. I hope you enjoyed. So pray and pray out. Hey guys, this is Past Spray and Pray here. I hope you enjoyed the last video where Future Spray and Pray went over all the cool features in the top five best Victoria 2 mods. In this video and at the end of the top five video mod, we are going to be showing you how to install all of these mods. Now, I've done it already for three mods. Now, the last one I have to do is Apocalypse 1836. Kind of ironic because that's the first one I'm probably going to go over since it was the, you know, fifth greatest mod. Anyways, let's go ahead and get started. It's pretty easy. All you do, you extract to a folder, maybe on your desktop. Um, doesn't really matter, but I like to do it on my desktop just so I can keep everything kind of organized. After I'm done, of course, I'm going to delete all these files because they're useless here on the desktop. Anyways, open up the folder. Now, look at that. There's another folder inside. Okay, so now you've found the folder with the MPEG file. This is the folder. These are the things you want to drag into your Steam... Oh god, what the fuck? <laughs> uh, okay, did that die? Anyways, um, these are the things that you want to drag into your Steam Victoria 2 mod folder. Now, if you don't have it through Steam, it's just going to be fine. It's going to be in pretty much the same place that I'll show you. It's just instead of going into Steam, you'll go direct directly into Victoria 2. 
Now to get to your Victoria 2 files for Steam, you're going to click on Program Files. Now if you don't have Steam, you just have regular Victoria 2, your Victoria 2 should show up here. But for Steam, you got to go to Steam, Steam Apps, Common, Victoria 2. Now, if you even if you don't have it, we should all be in the same place here. Now you're going to want to find the word Mod. Go to the Mod folder. As you can see, I've already installed the other three mods. Now I'm doing the last one, which is Apocalypse 1836. So go find that folder. Now this is very important that you do not move this folder. If you move this folder, the mod will not show up in your Victoria 2 box. I get a lot of comments saying, oh I installed it but I don't see it and it's probably because you just dragged this folder in without dragging the proper files in. Because if you drag a folder in, the game is going to be like, what the fuck, this is just a folder, where's the mod, where's the, the uh, movie clip that's supposed to be associated with it. So what you need to do is find these two files. If you don't see the mpeg file, you need to go deeper. <laughs> If there's no MPEG file, then I don't know what you're doing. You probably downloaded a patch for a mod and not an actual mod. Anyways, once you're at this folder and you have your mod folder open, you drag both files over to the mod folder. And look at that, it's very fast because the mod is very tiny. Anyways, so that's how you install every single mod that I showed you on that top five mod thing. You can see I have Ultimate already here, everything like that. Ultimate comes with this HOI 3 units. Um, I'm assuming that's for later on in tech. I haven't really gotten that far in my India game, so we'll see those units later on. But anyways, I hope you've learned how to install mods today. I get a lot of questions about it, so I'm happy to make this video, actually. If I did not explain it in a coherent way, or you just missed something, or you want to hear someone else tell you the exact same thing, go ahead and search. There's a bunch of other videos on YouTube that are pretty much the exact same thing as this. Also, if you're having other issues that I'm not covering here, you might want to try Google because Google has there's a lot of resources out there, especially on the Victoria 2 Reddit. You can find a lot of helpful troubleshooting things, especially with the deleting like the map cache because you know that's a pretty common issue. Anyways, that's that's it for this. I hope you enjoyed. Thanks so much for watching. Spray and pray out.